welcome to Streams of Progress, where we bring you weekly conversations with many of the UAE's prominent leaders and thinkers. Each of our guests are actively contributing to the vitality of the UAE community and economy. Our goal on the podcast is to inspire you to drive progress in your professional and personal life. Hey everyone, this is Mero, and this week on Streams of Progress, we have another special episode done in collaboration with Young Arab Leaders. On this episode, I sat down with Majid al Suwaidi, Managing Director of Dubai Media City, Dubai Studio City, and Dubai Production City, as well as serving as the head of IN5. We explored his early career roles at Emirates and DAFC, prior to working with TCOM Group. Majid shares his insights into how Dubai has built its government services on the basis of customer experience programs, ensuring the highest quality service offering for government-related services. As a board member of Young Arab Leaders, he aligns his work empowering the creative economy with the entrepreneurial leaders of tomorrow. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Today on this episode, we're sitting down with Majid al Suwaidi, Managing Director of Dubai Media City. He's also the head of IN5 and also a board member of Young Arab Leaders. Thank you for being on the show, Majid. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. So before we get into all the great work that you're doing, not only with Dubai Media City, but also with Studio City and Production City, also in Five, I would like to let our audience know a bit more about you and your background. If you could just tell us maybe where does this all begin? What was your childhood like? Well, um, so uh, first of all, my my name is Majid Asuri and I'm uh, from Dubai, so from the United Arab Emirates and from Dubai specifically. And uh, most of my uh, earlier education was in Dubai. Uh, in fact, I finished all my college education also within Dubai. So starting in an English uh, English school in my primary school uh, years and uh, moving into uh, Russia school for boys uh, during my uh, uh, next phase, my second year, and uh, uh, joining the American University in Dubai uh, for my uh, my my part, the last part of the equ- equation, um, and uh, I've been working in quite a number of places. But generally speaking, the uh, main three areas that, or main three companies that I've actually had a a, a, a great time uh, working for was uh, Emirates Airlines as as my initial start uh, of my career. Uh, then a small stint within uh, within uh, DIFC. Uh, during their setup phase, and uh, since uh, after leaving the IFC, I've been uh, with Tecom, um, going through the technology fields, and uh, now uh, looking after media and media city. You also pursued your MBA from Southern New Hampshire University. Yeah, uh, and that was during a period which I had to travel quite a bit when I was with Emirates. So we had uh, as part of my. Uh, my job there was to be in the outstation. So the, the ideal scenario was uh, to work on my MBA uh, during that period. And the best solution that we had at that point was, you know, uh, NS, uh, NSU, uh, which was oh, SNSU, which was part of uh, their online uh, program. Uh, so did you have to go to campus in the States or was it mostly online? Uh, no, I, I was in fact in Africa during a big portion of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was expecting you to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is the case. <laughs> so part of why I was in Kenya for some time, so I was... Uh, yeah, uh, doing all of that hard work from there too. So you said you worked at Emirates Airlines and then also the IFC. Were there any lessons you learned, you know, during those roles that you took with you to TCOM? Yeah, definitely. I think Emirates is a school in itself. It's a, you know, the 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 way that the business operates, the growth that that business was showing at that point of time. Uh, uh, you know, during the 2000s, it was a huge growth period for Emirates, and we were part of that growth period. And we were part of the commercial part of the business. So we've seen a lot of these new new locations being open. Uh, we've joined uh, some of these new outstation locations that they had around the world. So uh, there was a lot of learning during that period that I think uh, has uh, put a lot of rigor in what we do today uh, or in all the jobs that I've taken after that. So uh, that was uh, that was a, an, an excellent experience for me. Um, 
similar to that, I think the IFC was, and uh, that is an established business that has lots of, uh, you know, um, structure in it. Um, after that, I moved into the newly established businesses that you had to make sure that you uh, multitask, you build a lot of uh, opportunities around other things. So the, you, you moved from a very structured to a new startup uh, businesses that uh, depended a lot on you multitasking in many different fields. So you become a, a sales and then you become a business development expert and then you become, you know, so you played the many, many, you, you, you know, you wore many hats, which made it uh, also a very exciting uh, period to, during our career. Yeah. And that in itself is a whole different experience uh, compared to, like you said, the structured, the established roles. Yes. Yes. That was, an, an, uh, that was a really interesting thing. And it was a very interesting time in Dubai, to be frank, yeah. A lot of things were were there. Opportunities were excellent, and I think uh, a lot of people took advantage of it. And uh, we did the same too. Yeah. So right now you are currently with Tcom, but you've been there for a while now. Prior to the current role you have today, you were also the director of business development of Internet City and Outsource City. You also became the managing director there as well. It just just for our audience, especially if we have an international audience. If you can explain, you know, they keep hearing us say city, city, right? We know Dubai is a city, but then we talk about Dubai Internet City, Outsource City, Media City. What are these cities mm -hmm. and what role do they play in contributing to Dubai's overall economy? In this case, I'll have to give you a little yes. bit of history. So so I think so that you can put context to what we, yeah. we are talking about. And especially when you, you rightly mentioned so the, the the word city and why do uh, we refer to these locations as cities where they are within you know within the yeah. main big city that we are in. So the the story starts in 1999, I think, with His Highness having a uh, a vision of how Dubai should be uh, looking like in the future. And uh, at that point of time, Dubai has started into a process of development and started in a process of creating. Uh, you know, other opportunities other than dependability on oil. So uh, there were certain areas that the government had set as broad lines, which would result in the city actually growing out of the dependency on oil, which at, at, uh, earlier to that was around 80%, to uh, a very low percentage, as we understood, uh, you know, at that point of time, that oil is, is, a, is not a sustainable way of doing business. So his highness vision was always to develop a, a develop a Dubai into a, a knowledge based economy. So moving away from a, a, a an export only to a knowledge based um, import economy. So uh, uh, and that resulted in the initial startup of creating Dubai Internet City, and that happened in '99, I think, in uh, in Jitex, where he uh, he launched that project. And after that, I think, uh, you, uh, you know, I, uh, a very uh, skilled uh, team started that project from nothing, basically, from trying to attract international audience, attracting new international companies to use Dubai as their, their hub for the Middle East and uh, Middle East region uh, and for them to operate out of Dubai. Since then, uh, our focus has been always about how do, what are the things that companies require. And this is where the city fact comes in. Uh, so we developed uh, uh, areas that were uh, uh, geographically marked and that had a new set of rules for companies to start operating. Not only they required a, a new set of rules, but required a full new set of investment into infrastructure. So these cities were so uh, advanced at that point of time that uh, they were, uh, you know, when they started with Dubai Internet City and then Media City and the Knowledge Park, we had laid one of the largest implementations of fiber around the world into one single location. So we actually built a purpose-built uh, location for companies to come and, and operate. So the IT companies that we launched with in, in 99, so in 2000, they actually started operating from the site, was made to what they would re require. 
So a high bandwidth because they needed to communicate with their other offices around the world, uh, a, a place that had a, uh, an exciting new feel to it, uh, other than what was available in the city. Uh, and I think these were a, a test bed of how the city of Dubai would, have, would, would turn into, into the future. Um, other than that, I think what we do great here is that the fact that His Highness's vision was always to focus your efforts on a single industry and make it really well, you know, make, make it so good that people will try to come to it and will not hesitate to come to it. So when we started with the media in Dubai Internet City, we actually created the whole infrastructure behind it and made it so good that people started coming into it. So when they actually started, there were at least more than uh, 100, 100 companies that have signed up for the project at, at, at the start. So that in itself gave people that kind of, uh, you know, confidence that what the government was doing is 100% correct. Then we, ex we ex expanded that into media city because one of the important things were they, are, they, they developed a, 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 a five-step horizon. So you actually de developed one, different parts of the industry or different parts of the city uh, in different times. So the second part was to develop media, develop uh, the technology, so the tech, which is the biggest, uh, in which His Highness saw at that point of time as uh, something that will be the thing that will pull the, uh, the city uh, you know, away from the dependability on oil, and because it pulled in a lot of minds from around the world. So the second part was to make all of the smart people, basically, all the people that had the knowledge to be, you know, located in Dubai so that they can share their knowledge and everyone within the city uh, would benefit out of it. The second came in as media and we found out that, you know, for you to have a sustainable business and sustainable economy, you require a very big support from the media community. And the media community came in with a certain requirement too. You know, how do they, uh, how do they come up uh, with uh, talking about, uh, you know, how, how do publications work? What do they require? Do, uh, do we need to send them uh, on a, a wild goose, uh, goose race trying to find out how they can set up their business? No, not at all. So a lot of what we did was created within these communities. And that's the reason why they are called cities today, because they were integrated they are small cities within a bigger within, within a bigger city because most of the businesses that you require or most of, of the activities that you require to start up your business are available on the ground even opening a PO box you don't need to actually leave the campus to open a PO box somewhere else we had that covered here yeah, you don't need to go to uh, I don't know the the Ministry of Labor to 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 get your permits to work that was here. So a lot of that infrastructure that was built was made in a way that gave this place a huge advantage uh, uh, against a lot of places around the world. Uh, and I think since then, we've actually grown quite a bit. We've actually worked a lot on our offerings. And I think today, with more than 5,000 plus companies of, uh, you know, and most, most of the four, Fortune 500 companies operating out of the Middle East are operating out of Dubai within within all the sectors that we take care of today. So we take care of um, you know technology as Dubai Internet City, media as Dubai Media City, uh, and the media sector generally. So studios and production city are all uh, different. Uh, they attract different kind of companies. And then you've got science, you've got education, you've got design, uh, which is the, le the, the latest of our uh, of the products that we have within our uh, business, uh, and uh, many more, basically. For what you're saying, especially at that time in 99, it was very forward-thinking to streamline a lot of these processes, because like you said, to go to the you know the labor department and to go uh, you know get some other permits at all these different places, by putting them all within one geographic location, you get most of what you need for your business right next to you, right? You get most of your tasks done. And it was built on a customer experience program. So people at the initial phase even uh, got to the point where they laid even red carpets for customers <laughs> to come in. And we, you know, for a business partner to come in, they said, we want to make everyone feel 
as important. So they actually laid a red carpet for people to walk onto while getting into their op- into the offices. So that's that's the, the amount of uh, you know attention to detail that uh, these communities have built around across the years as a symbolic gesture but even in practice it's actually you know carried out by delivering that high level of quality customer service yeah definitely and and we do not actually we believe that today any company that starts up within our communities will have the same attention across we have a team that is dedicated to support them and to basically tell them if there is anything that you require most probably you will not need to leave the zone to find out what it is or to get it so i want to ask you this as managing director of maybe dubai's most creative ecosystem you know this includes media city studio city production city how have you seen the creative scene within dubai and the uae in general grow because of this like in the last decade well you know we believe today that this industry these industries so The, the three sectors today are, work on different levels. Although they are very parallel to each other, nevertheless, each one is in, at a different stage of its maturity or life cycle within the region. So the media sector, if we talk about the general media sector, I think we are uh, at a very uh, mature point of, uh, of our business. I think there are a lot of businesses that operate out of media city today that have, uh, you know, that provide an excellent uh, Uh, quality of service, excellent creativity, excellent, basically, uh, uh, professionalism in trying to provide that service, whether they are a newspaper or a publication or a, an, an, you know, a general advertising agency, you will find all the works of life basically here. Uh, and as we move into the other sectors, so for instance, the production sector in, in Studio City, so for instance, uh, you know, film production and others, I think we are at the we are at the at the growth phase of that of that sector. It's different. Uh, there are uh, different uh, cities around the region that are much older than we, we you know than our industry here. Uh, nevertheless, I think what we compete with all of these or yeah compete with all of these is that we provide a an, a world class infrastructure for people to come and utilize. So we have one of the, one of the largest uh, sound stages in the world, basically located within Studio City, with the high specs available. I think uh, a huge huge productions that have happened uh, during the past, uh, such as Star Trek, uh, such as uh, a number of Jackie Chan movies that have uh, you know that have been filmed partially in in these in these uh, sound stages, uh, has shown that infrastructure wise today Dubai has grown a, a, a whole lot uh, uh, and provide a, an excellent uh, uh, ground for people to come and produce uh, high quality productions for the for the cinema and for the uh, film and content manage, uh, content market in general um, and we I think we are capitalizing on that quite a bit I think we've seen Uh, we've seen in this year at least so the, we've seen quite a number of uh, good interest that is coming from the region um, so this shows us that or this indicates that the film industry is growing content in general and not even film alone I think content in general require you know uh, this uh, quality infrastructure to be done and it requires that it fits within the whole ecosystem that we've built over the last years So uh, this is, is growing very well. And I think this is from a maturity point of view. And on the production side, I think uh, it's an interesting world there on the, on the other hand. You know, production in general, publishers in general, uh, printing presses in general, uh, the whole industry is going through a, a, a huge overhaul. Uh, and we've actually p- tried to play a role in supporting uh, all of our business partners that are there in trying to find what other things that we can do to help them, whether we need to, uh, you know, bring international uh, thought leaders to come and talk to these companies and say, you know what, this is happening in the world and this is where the world is moving, if they didn't know that, or they want us to share a lot of this, these studies that we've actually, we do to support the industries that we, uh, that we basically participate in. 
so that people not only know what is happening today. So I'm not only trying to be you uh, supporting you in your business in your day to day. Nevertheless, I'm even supporting these businesses in the in the future and telling them, you know what, you need to upgrade, you need to change, you need to evolve so that you become uh, more relevant uh, as as the industry is shifting uh, from uh, you know around the world. Speaking of supporting industries, anyone who's been involved in the UAE startup ecosystem has interacted in some way or another with In5. Mm-hmm. For our audience, could you describe what In5 is and what was the purpose when it was set up? So, so In5 has come, uh, you know, this is, I think it's fourth year and uh, or fifth year. Um, M5 came in because based on the same concept that we've started with the whole and the whole cities that we are running. And we found out that, you know, for you to be able to find companies basically or to support the industry and you want more companies to start up in the, in the UAE, you require this level of... Uh, uh, of uh, DK. Uh, and so M5 was created. M5 was the platform, the innovation platform for Ticom Group, basically, where we uh, support entrepreneurs. We set uh, different rules for entrepreneurs because we didn't want to apply the same rule I apply to a Microsoft to a guy starting up uh, a, a small online business, for instance. Uh, we wanted to give them a different level of of, of, uh, of support, and uh, M5 came in in a, in a in the tech field first of all, and we've seen that a lot of companies today have uh, you know a lot of companies have started out of there, and a lot of companies have got a lot of these investments. So we interface between the entrepreneur and the investor. We become a a, a, a hub where the entrepreneur is able to operate his idea or make his idea a reality. And we are also here to support the, inter- the, the investor where we try to say, you know what, I'm going to save you a lot of money and put where you can put your investment into the business instead of putting your investment into logistics and other things that come around it. Uh, you will be able to get <clears throat> extra services as an entrepreneur. You know, whether you want to start up your business, you want to, you know, get a certain status. You want to get get support from someone in the business that uh, someone within the industry. Uh, we we work also very closely with all of our fo- and a lot of the companies that we have in in the different zones. So in 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 technology, for instance, we work with with uh, with Microsoft. We work with Cisco, Oracle, all of the big uh, <coughs> Fortune companies that are saying, you know what, Give, show me the industry, show me the people that you would like me to support and I'm willing to support them. So we act as a hub for bringing these together. Um, this started, this was an initial start. And as, as we grew, we saw that so there are other industries that we have that require the same infrastructure. They require you to support them in logistics, that require you to support them in, in, in licenses, that require you to support them sometimes in skill sets that they don't have. So creating workshops and creating other things. So last year we had more than 200 different workshops in different fields. So now we focus, uh, uh, so now our M5 not only focuses on technology, in fact, it focuses on technology, it focuses on design, it focuses on media too. So we found that, you know what, creating content today is something really big and it shows a lot of support, uh, a lot of opportunity for people to invest into, you know, content creators and content creators to be able to create content that is required in the region. We are the, generally, we are dependent on, on, on a lot of imported content. Whereas a lot of people are saying, you know why? Why do I depend on imported content when I can create my own content here? But I don't want to spend, a, a, you know, an exhaustive amount of money on a studio, for instance. So we actually created M5 Media, for instance, where we built the concept with studios, with uh, editing suites, with sound rooms, with all of these uh, technical requirements that you normally would pay a lot for somewhere else where you as a member of M5, you start getting discounts on on these so that we help you move from where you were into the new part of the, uh, you know, you know, instead of you focusing on your logistics, no, focus on your content, focus on your product. And that would be the 
the the you know the the success factor for you and after you do that and you become have a established business we will be more than happy to bring in some of the investors that we work with for them to see your product and to be able to either invest or to at least give you some good feedback for you to go back with and work with so that you become more investable uh, in the future if that's if that's me or even get the opportunity to get that investment uh, from the beginning. Just this idea or this concept is very novel where it's beyond just a co-working space or licensing. You're actually giving them or providing them the tools and access to very expensive equipment, like, you know, even the studio itself to actually practice their crafts so they can focus on their creativity. We have professions coming from all over the world that we've actually spent a lot of money on bringing them here to offer workshops for specifics, even you know some of the works of, for instance, if we talk about media, uh, you know, a a, uh, a sound workshop. Basically, how do you uh, convey sound during a photo, a, a a video, or a content? You know, what you know, getting a sound profession from somewhere else, getting a lighting specialist, and doing a workshop only mm-hmm. on lighting, uh, bringing a world class. Uh, uh, actor to talk about uh, how can you become a um, you know work within the comedy field uh, and we do that across the board so yeah يعني, these are Arabic uh, English uh, uh, professionals that come in and we've got quite a bit يعني, we've got more than I think if I'm not mistaken I think I think more than a thousand plus people attended these workshops uh, which is Excellent for this industry, which is, you know, earlier was very fragmented uh, ac- across the whole country, where we brought them all to the same place, where we tell them, you know what, let's support you to create your own content. We don't need anything from you other than the fact that we want you to say that you got the opportunity and you took advantage of it within within M5. You previously mentioned the importance of innovation, and I know under your leadership, the integrated ICT hub became a strategic partner of the Smart Dubai initiative that's driving in most of Dubai's transformation into one of the smartest cities in the world. In your opinion, why is it important for future-oriented cities to, to develop this smart infrastructure and services for residents? Well, I, I, think, I think this goes back to the initial startup of the business. I think we are only, you know, soldiers within this, uh, this uh, or, uh, you know, part of this race. But I think the biggest credit goes to uh, His Highness's initial vision, which said we need to be a knowledge-based economy. And knowledge-based economies today developed a lot on technology. And basically, we trying to attract all of these businesses from around the world that share their knowledge basic uh, and share their vision uh, that aligns with His Highness's vision, basically. He said Dubai has to become a mobile-friendly uh, city, and we had everyone working towards that goal, which made it uh, made life a lot easier for people to come and uh, pitch ideas that you would not have taken maybe in the, in the past, because they might have been so much in the future. Nevertheless, something that we've learned is that whatever we've seen in the past is actually happening today. So the opportunities with the strong leadership and with a strong infrastructure that was set showcase that innovation is a a vital part of your growth process and a vital part of your uh, sustainable model as a city and as as a... And I think our participation... With within you know smart uh, smart uh, the smart government has always been a, a supporter and we have been set up towards setting up the scene so that when this happens we have the right minds here available that could offer you know the the right the right solutions for the different uh, challenges that the city was facing. So yeah, we are we we are very glad to to see that there are a lot of companies that have been within our zones 
that have participated in the the initiative or the the, the smart city initiative across the last years. Speaking of the future, you also serve on the Dubai Future Council for Entrepreneurship and Innovation Ecosystem. Our previous guests mm-hmm. have also been other members on other future councils. Can you describe what your role on the Dubai Future Council for Entrepreneurship and Innovation is and what specifically is this council's mission? So basically, you know, with this we go back to the M5 story as, as, as a lot of what we've done in the past have shown that the, the idea of M5 is a requirement for us to grow a sector, a new sector, to support a new set of individuals, to come up with... Uh, Uh, solutions to different challenges that we have. So there are so many different things that we've actually built in so that people uh, could benefit out of it. And I think our role as a, a, as a major player within, this, within the entrepreneurship sector in Dubai has been, always been to share a lot of the Uh, the, the findings that we've seen and we've uh, understood over the past years and come up and, and suggest and get these solutions. And our impact is built on sharing of knowledge by the professionals within the industry. So we've got a lot of the industry professionals, part of the part of M5 in, in some way or another, whether they are part of a steering committee that looks after uh, choosing the individuals or they are part of the mentorship pools or the, you know, the coaching field. So there is so many. So uh, us involved into these, in these councils is, is a normal uh, direction where we are basically now part of a bigger pool, part of a, a, a more concentrated uh, approach towards solving sp- specific problems within uh, within the entrepreneur within the entrepreneurial field and uh, playing a, a bigger role into finding solutions because so the part of what we do is is create or suggest certain changes within legislation that would help companies uh, would help entrepreneurs basically uh, operate and as we are in a ever changing world we need to be 100 available and basically take all of this feedback to the right uh, people within uh, the the you know the the lawmakers basically so that they can be able to to update or to create new new infrastructure within the within the legislation so that they can that companies could operate uh, and support them definitely so speaking of the entrepreneurial ecosystem you are also a board member of young arab leaders In the past, we've listened to other guests tell us how they think of Young Arab Leaders. Can you tell us in your own words what made you decide to be a part of Young Arab Leaders? I mean, everything is linked together if you think of it. <laughs> you know, most of the activities we do are all linked to people, to entrepreneurs, to opportunities, to support of this industry, because we believe today that the industry that we work within has to work together so that they are able to uh, grow. And today, uh, as, as, as a platform, has shown that these kind of individuals that you would like to interact with, that you would like to learn from in a lot of cases, uh, is, is hugely beneficial for us to be able to, to grow individually and to grow as a business too. So uh, there are opportunities that we've seen within within Yal's uh, platform that I think have been uh, a huge benefit for us or for me individually too. Yeah. So there are so many different uh, uh, benefits out of these things. And and part of our N5 infrastructure requires that we be part of these so that we can hear what the, what the people require. You know, what the company, what the entrepreneurs require so that tomorrow I can also provide you with a set of uh, products that people are interested in that will make life easy for people. So there are so many different uh, benefits that we uh, we derive out of such relationships or such uh, platforms. And uh, we believe people coming together and networks that are, you know, uh, have grown 
is is the right way forward. I know you've been very active in joining different YAL events despite, you know, your hectic schedule. So far, which among these events have you enjoyed the most or which has been the most enriching for you as an individual? Well, I, to be frank, I don't know. I don't remember one specifically, but I think most of the ones that I have attended have shown that have uh, has given at least me as an individual an angle that I would not have seen before uh, or provided me with a benefit that I did not uh, I did not get earlier basically in, in, in other platforms so there is there are I mean, other than the fact that general network is is uh, is enough to be frank yeah. getting in the in a room with with all of these professionals in different fields you learn a lot from investments to to retail to uh, to uh, you know uh, businesses within the media sector and other other sectors i think that in itself is a huge benefit i know network is one of the core aspects of yell but another aspect is actually also the, the concept of mentorship. In your opinion, what role does mentorship play in a youth's learning and development? I think today, learning from someone who's actually gone through the process is the best way of growing community, uh, growing businesses. We have to understand that you don't need to go through the same challenges that others went through if you were able to get the solution from someone who's actually went through it and knows it by now. And I think you know, mentorship is a major role for the growth of any city, basically. If you go to any international city that has a strong platform of, the, of, of entrepreneurs or professionals, you will find a lot of uh, sharing of knowledge, sharing of experiences, so that the next person who comes on board does not you know, suffer or does not go through the same challenges. In fact, he, he surpasses these cha- the earlier challenges and find new challenges in that are in the future, which would help him grow his business or grow the whole industry, to be frank. Definitely. I want to shift now to a bit more about yourself or your own uh, opinions and thoughts. Are there any personal routines or work habits that you tend to do that you consider, you know, that are unique to yourself that help you achieve more? Well, as an individual, I think today, one of the things that I I personally believe uh, is important is to keep everything interesting, um, to keep the challenge always available. Sometimes you need to think a little bit outside the box to keep the whole, you know, it might look a little bit off, but I think it gives me a lot of uh, opportunities where I think we can do things in a different way. And that question is always put on the table whenever we come and discuss, for instance, procedures or laws or, or things that our business partners today might have gone through or might, or might as well go through during during any process that we do. And we want to always ask, is this the best? Which, generally speaking, you find people who conform to, to, to a certain environment, they give into this as a, a way of doing things. But I believe today that there is no one way of doing things. And there are definitely ways that you can do things better. So uh, I believe in, 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 that, in that way of thinking, uh, which is you will always find a solution that is better than the solution you have. You need to challenge yourself. You need to make it more exciting and active so that you can, you can develop, develop personally and professionally. Yeah, that's fascinating to constantly challenge yourself or push yourself to think outside the box. So I'm going to just ask a few rapid fire questions. So if we were going to give you a, massive billboard on Sheikh Zayed Road going towards Dubai or Abu Dhabi for a whole month that you could say to the people visiting Dubai or, you know, re- even the residents, what would you like it to say? Well, I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities lying ahead. Keep your head up and uh, work hard. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Do you have any book you tend to gift to people? Not, not really, to be frank. I think there are so many different books that uh, 
um, you know, we are part of uh, the Dubai growth story, to be frank, and we always like to share these experiences that at least we benefited from with a lot of people that come from around the world. You know, as part of our job, a lot of our business partners are people coming from different places around the world. And a lot of people say, starting, you know, talking about how Dubai is. And when you talk about how, what, what, what was Dubai, you know, 50 years ago and what is it today, people are very keen in understanding what happened in between. So, you know, the, 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 the books of His Highness, for instance, are a very good reference point of what, in the mind of the person behind the whole big story. And I think these are nice to share, especially with people coming from outside the region, because this reflects basically on us as nationals of the country, on how are we thinking and how we are building our, uh, our thought process and what are, where is the limit that we would like to, to reach. So I think these are some of the interesting books. Uh, other than that, I think there are other interesting uh, general books basically within within business that i think might might ring you know might be very interesting for people to share do you have any favorite no favorites to be frank <laughs> no favorites okay <laughs> speaking of favorites do you have any favorite documentaries favorite documentaries interesting question um uh, not really. I think uh, I think that, that some of the interesting documentaries. I don't know since I joined media. Since uh, yeah, I started looking at documentaries from a different angle. You know, from the production point of view and how what what did they use in making these documentaries and how fascinating. You know, talking talking to the people around you. You know, in, within the industry. You know, the, such documentaries about Earth, for instance, and how this photographer or videographer be, was able to take a that. Uh, specific shot of that specific animal in that environment uh, today it seems that they've, they the, 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 the people within this industry rubbed a lot of uh, a lot of this uh, approach on me so I, I, I like a lot of these fascinating uh, you know documentaries about earth like similar to like planet earth the david attenborough type of document oh. yeah, yeah there is in planet earth and i think discovery has one also if i'm not mistaken they did one about UAE, about UAE's wildlife. This is a, an interesting question. We always find it interesting to ask our guests. If the scientist came to you, Majid, and said, we would like you to tell us what the next moonshot project should be. Like, what's a dream initiative you would like to see the UAE engage in? What would that be? Well, you know, that's a very difficult question here. You know, yeah, because it, there's a lot of competition it, with the real projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've actually we've actually gone to Mars, so you know the, the bar is too high to be frank, Annie. So um well uh, what could that be? I think one of the major and this is a personal and any and we believe today that things are going towards a specific direction. So technology is a, a critical factor. And, uh, and looking how technology is being developed, I think a lot of our youth today have to be able to harness this kind of education or harness this kind of uh, understanding of technology and the importance of that so that they become the creators of the future. And uh, what we would like to see is that we would like to see the educational system basically being able to pitch that whole uh, environment, basically uh, the overhaul of that environment, where they would be able to find and get a, an excellent crop at the end of each, uh, you know, educational band and of different creators. So if we come up with a creator mindset within our within our industry, within our basically uh, society, this would help us a lot in making a huge huge uh, growth uh, story in the future. So I believe today, if if one of the projects could that uh, would that be is basically cre create a creator environment. Uh, 
for these creators to be produced in the future. Oh, that's fascinating. That's interesting. I've never thought of that uh, creator ecosystem, the, the creator's creator's place. Yeah. Very interesting. But lastly, do you have any words of wisdom uh, you would like to leave our listeners with? I think, uh, like we said, I think today uh, opportunities are available. They might be hidden, <laughs> but but they are there. So uh, don't stop dreaming. I think uh, keep your head up. And like you said, like the billboard says, you know, keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the billboard. <laughs> keep looking forward and uh, hopefully you will find what you're looking for. And I think Dubai has shown success in making dreams happen. That's great. Where can our listeners go to learn more either about yourself or about the various work you're doing? Well, uh, we try to be in the media as much as possible, to be frank. Uh, you know, <laughs> where we try to explain and we try to excite people to join, for instance, a lot of what we do. Because a lot of what we do today is is benevolent. It's, it's, it's done to support the communities that we run. Uh, we are not, we don't expect any return from it other than the fact that we believe that if you see the Uh, something today you will show uh, basically a lot of the opportunities in the future where companies will grow and they will start flourishing and the economy will start flourishing and this benefits us in the future. So we believe today this is something that uh, is available. We discuss a lot of this during a lot of our uh, interviews and discussions, uh, whether uh, uh, locally or internationally. Um, and I think a lot of this is available everywhere, to be frank. Is there any specific website that you can think of? We've got a lot of our information on our website, dmc.ae. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll direct them there then. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Masha. It was a pleasure. My pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. You can find this episode show notes on our website at streamsofprogress.com slash Majid. That's M-A-J-E-D. We'd love to connect with you. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram or reach out via our website. If you can please take a few minutes to give us an honest rating on iTunes, this really makes a huge difference and improves our ability to reach more people in the UAE and beyond. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you next week on Streams of Progress.